Let's talk about the elephant in the room. How do you find business? How do you maintain said business? And how do you grow your business as a freelance videographer? Let's talk about building better business practices in 2023. There are a million ways to talk about how to build a better business. And there are many different ideas and even channels dedicated on this particular topic. But as videographers in this particular freelance market and also current market that we're living in, it's always good to level up your game, to, to give yourself a roadmap, a guideline, a structure of what to follow when it comes to looking for work and maintaining accounts, providing client experience and providing editing experience so you get more work. Let's just delve in and talk about my strategies that I use with Copy Shop Film and Creative. So right off the bat and number one, focus on your existing clientele basis or your your existing client sector now this is a really important one because as filmmakers and as creatives we all want to try working in a multitude of different ideas and different formats and with different subjects we might want to work in films we might want to work with car commercials or or travel videos or even product videography but if that's not in the sector where you've had most of your success it's potentially not a good place to focus all your efforts in. Focus your efforts initially in your sector that you know. So with me, I have had a lot of experience working in the arts because I'm an opera singer. So I've worked with orchestras and I've worked with choirs and I've worked with opera companies to create engaging content. And, and from there, I've grown my client base to work with many leading artists and arts organizations all across this country. Now, this is something that I've also become known for because when it comes to finding videography or finding film projects in the arts, since those said clients and said organizations have worked with me, it provides a starting basis for where new clients and new organizations might look for creating film work or creating video work. Challenge yourself to approach new companies in the sector that you've worked in and showcase the work that you've done. Now, of course, that's making a reel and providing film examples or even social media portfolios, let's just say, of existing work. But it allows the company that you're approaching to get an idea of what they can expect if they hire you and your team for that particular project. And on that topic, reach out. Now, clients aren't going to come to you. You have to go to them. There are so many freelance videographers out there and so many filmmakers out there nowadays that you know, you can't just expect the work to come to you based on a website or social media or portfolio, etc. You have to do the groundwork. You have to knock on doors. You have to say hello. You have to send emails. You have to send newsletters, set up coffee appointments, and ultimately start the business for yourself. Reach out because even if the client says no, it still engages that, you know, creative drive within you to go to the next possible engagement. Always challenge yourself to continually find new opportunities. Now, look online on job boards, look online on, you know, even obviously the Indeeds and LinkedIn's and that sort of thing. But look on other boards as filmmakers, like, for example, Facebook or Mandy or even Kijiji, you'll find opportunities where people are looking for DPs and looking for filmmakers and media companies to do projects and also word of mouth. And that is a huge thing too. If you know somebody who might be looking to do a project, reach out to them and see potentially if you might be a good fit for a collaboration. So maybe you've been hired by a new client or maybe an existing client has contacted you for a new project. Let's talk about finding the need. Let's talk to the client to exactly find out what they want. Do they want a feature piece? Do they want a quick social media reel? Do they want to have an advertisement? Do they want to have an ad? Do they want to have a, a, a blog post or a vlog post? Do they want to have potentially just archival video? Don't necessarily expect what you think the client needs. Open the discussion to find out exactly what they want because that makes the process incredibly efficient as well as it saves time both on the production side and setting up as well as the editing side. Now don't forget, it's not just your time you're taking into consideration, you are taking into consideration the time of the client. So get right to the point. Let's talk about what they want and set that up both on storyboards and talk about shot lists, talk about locations, potential subjects. Do you need to have it being a certain format or length? Knowing all of that ahead of time gives you a roadmap that you can plan those videos from. Let's talk about storyboarding and shot lists. Now, this is a fundamental 
fundamental thing for all videographers and filmmakers. Don't just walk into a project knowing what you're you know, possibly able to give. Have a roadmap plan, potentially if it's gonna be a document that showcases the shots that are needed or as a visual storyboard chart, have that description ready to go and, and bring that to your set. Now, there are many different programs out there that you can use. Obviously with shot lists, you can just use Google Docs or you can use a, a PDF format file, but you can also use programs for storyboards to give more of a visual representation. You know, you don't have to be Van Gogh or Leonardo da Vinci to create storyboards. You can do things by pulling in assets from open source media or unsplash.com or even pictures online of scenes that you'd like to capture or ideas you'd like to capture. So here are five options that I've used. I've used Canva. I've used Boards, the storyboard creator. I've used Studio Binder, Storyboarder by Wonder Unit, as well as Storyboard Pro by Toon Boom. Now this is not a video talking about the specifics of each storyboard software, but have that storyboard set up ready to go and invite the client in to take a look at the storyboard process. It makes them feel involved, it makes them feel engaged, and it also makes things clear for both the process of shooting and the process of editing. So your storyboards are done, your shot lists are ready to go, and we are now ready to plan your team. Now, do you need to have a drone operator? Do you need to have a grip or an AD or a second camera or a sound recordist or a location scout? Do you need to have craft, hair and makeup, effects? There are many different people that can be involved to make a project become a reality, but it's always best to have a team that you know and that you can trust to get the job done. So with Copy Shop, we have a multitude of different freelancers that we've worked with that we can engage for a project because we've worked on so many different projects in the past that we know we can expect a high level of quality when it comes to shoot. Now, a client wants to be assured. They want to be, they want to be confident in the team that you're bringing. So have that team in place and maybe even have a backup in case somebody can't make that shoot or has to cancel. This is always paramount to looking as professional as possible as well as being as prepared as possible as you can be. And potentially, if people have the ability of taking on different roles, that makes things more efficient. If, if you have a grip who knows how to operate a camera, then potentially you can have people swap in and out depending upon the need of a shoot. So on the topic of production, let's talk about building the best production experience possible for the client. Now that can be as simple as being positive and excited and engaged on set, but that can also mean that you're giving the client the ability to be part of the film team. Now in this way, I often suggest giving a client a director's monitor that has a wireless receiver. Now this allows the client to number one, see the shot, they can see the process, and they can ultimately know what to expect when it comes to editing because they see what the camera sees live. And I've never had a client say no to this process. They, they wanna see what they're investing in because this is their project. So there are many ways of being able to uh, showcase this in a director's monitor, but what we use is we use the Hollyland Mars Pro, the Mars 300 Pro to be specific. And this is a wireless receiver that connects both to the camera and it also connects to a wireless monitor. So I basically give the monitor with the receiver to the client and they can walk around with it and they can see what's being done. They can see firsthand that director's experience. And this is huge. This, this builds confidence in the client because ultimately that's what we wanna do as freelancers and videographers, filmmakers, all that is build confidence with our clients. So definitely look into picking one of these up if you don't have it. There are many different companies, but the Holly Lend runs for around about three to $500, depending upon the model. And I highly recommend it. They have very low latency, as well as the range is really good in these things. And they can plug in via USB-C, for example, if your battery has a port. You can also plug it in with a Sony MP battery series. So many different ways of powering these little things, but they're small, they're lightweight, they're durable. They just, they're definitely a need. And if, if you haven't started using wireless receivers, now's the time. So one thing to avoid when it comes to working on set is focusing too much on the tech or talking too much about the tech. Now the client isn't there to discuss camera specs and to discuss options on, you know, camera ideas and then gear ideas and all that sort of thing. They expect you as a freelance videographer or filmmaker to already have that built in. That, that is knowledge that you must bring that you are confident in. I've seen some creatives, I've seen some videographers start to question the tech and they start to ask questions of the client with the tech, which often 
creates a situation where the client is not as confident in the ability that the videographer is bringing. Now, they expect you to know your camera inside and out. As a freelance videographer or a filmmaker, that is your role, that is your job to know that camera body and that lens and you know any stabilization gimbals that you're using and also any sort of support apparatus or drones or permits. This should all be second nature to you but it should in many ways not be brought to the forefront for the client. Now, some clients might be curious about cameras and they may have some experience in using them. And if that's the case, then definitely bring them into the conversation. Don't focus primarily on issues with the camera or the gear or whatever else. Make the process seamless. Make it efficient and clean, both on creating the content as well as getting the shot and having the gear respond the way that you'd like it to do. Now that often falls into checking things once and then double checking things twice because you can never be over prepared when it comes to a film shoot. So many components go into it from memory cards to you know support apparatuses to also batteries and accessories and you know making sure you have proper coverage in case the weather changes. There's a lot to consider with film work but make sure you're all set before you begin the project and, and take out the tech when it comes to making the film. So now that production is done, let's talk about clarity and expectations of the edit. Now this should already be built in way before production is completed and as well as the pre-production process, but make sure that your contracts have specific information dedicated to how many edits the client can expect and also what part of the edit they can expect at what time and what additional elements might be brought in. Do you need to have color grading? Do you need to have a sound technician provide uh, additional work with sound? Having this already part of that process that is already known and already established saves time, it saves confusion, and it makes the editing process faster and more efficient. It's, it's never the best practice to offer the ability of having unlimited edits or offering the ability of just essentially delivering a product but not checking it with potentially a group or a board or essentially a collection of people that might be there to, to look at that edit and approve the video. Know these steps ahead of time and know what is expected of the project because this will dictate the efficiency of the deliverable and essentially it builds your reputation as not only a videographer but potentially as an editor too. It's always good to offer additional skills with our kits, let's just say, as a videographer and, and having that ability of being able to do these things like an editing process and providing those services just levels up your business game. And if you can do sound grading or sound grading, let's just say, or if you can do color grading additionally on top of things, it just gives you more tools in your toolbox and provides a better quality result in the end. So another key component to any project, regardless if it's an actual project or film or a video project, is to always look for collaborations with your business. Now, this is key to grow because you, know, you might not be just hired by a particular client or a product or as a company, you might be hired by another media company. You might be hired by a film team or production crew. Knowing the ability of collaborating with projects and being able to offer your services in collaboration makes you more versatile. It makes you more approachable. It makes you more desirable to work with because you're not just going to work as your branded company, let's just say. I'm not going to work only as Coffee Shop Creative. I may work specifically as an editor on a project with a different team. I might work as a camera operator or as a DP on a particular shoot with a different production company that already has that engaged client. Being versatile in collaborations just allows you to grow said net. And, and on topics of collaborations, look for needs. Now I work with Canada Film Equipment and with them, I'm able to review their gear and new items that come into their inventory that they rent. And that also gives me the ability of working with their team. And it's something that I have now am very lucky to have because when it comes to a film shoot or a production shoot, I can then be able to utilize their gear. And I've developed that communication as well as partnership with that company. Look for other creatives that might have abilities of being able to help that network grow. Find creatives and reach out to them and engage with them on, on teams and on shoots and on ideas and on gear and, and all these sorts of things to allow you to grow as a videographer and as a filmmaker.
And finally, last but not least, don't get lazy. Now, this is a big one. It's very easy to do a project and then just take a break and walk away from it. It's always best to make sure you constantly try to, to level up your impressions to prospective clients or even your existing clients. Make sure you have content dedicated to maybe specific areas of shooting. Do you wanna have a drone reel? Do you wanna have a film reel? Do you wanna have a car reel? Do you wanna have a, a corporate interview reel? It's never a bad thing to showcase all your work when it comes to projects and, and giving specific people the ability of what they might be looking for. Having just a basic reel is good, but sometimes it doesn't always fill a need specifically for a client. And you don't know what that need might be until that conversation starts. Make sure your Instagram content is regularly updated and that you are engaging on these particular platforms. It's always best to make sure you look like you're active. You don't want to look like you're stagnant. So keep yourself engaged and keep always leveling up the content that you got. Because once you shoot, as long as you're able to use that content, you can make different videos from that and you can make different promotional material for yourself from the content that you shot. Only if you're allowed to and that's written down in the clause of the contract, but make sure you have that in place. So there you go. Better business practices from pre-production to production to post-editing. These are tricks and these are ideas that work and they make everything just efficient. So when it comes to making your business and your growth as an entrepreneur or as a freelancer in the new year, utilize these tricks and utilize these tips to, to make it as like a guidebook for yourself on the next project. If you found this helpful, drop a line below and hit up that subscribe button for more information and stay tuned for more ideas on how you can grow as a filmmaker and as a videographer in the new year. Peace.